Hi, hi! Hello, my name is Raven Moon Dragon, and welcome to the weekly meeting of the Moon Sisters Collective. Yay! This week's I am um, unenthused. agenda item. Wait, 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 wait. Willow Sky, let me talk. This week's agenda item is the epidemic of campus rape. Yeah. And with me today to talk about the epidemic of campus rape is Marcy May who is a militant radical feminist and she believes that the, the solution to campus rape should be a final one. And I have to say I agree because I think that we shouldn't be keep revisiting the problem and trying to find other solutions. We should create a final solution that solves it. Um, did you want to speak more on the final solution that you were thinking about, Marcy May? I mean the final solution. Okay, yeah, well, I agree, I agree. We should have a final solution that actually is final. And also with me today is Willow Sky. Yeah, she has more of a different approach. She thinks that it's raising our feminine consciousness and banishing the masculine influence, the dark masculine energies from our vaginas is the way to end rape culture on college campuses. Did you want to speak to that a little, Marcy, or Willow Sky? Yes. It's very important that we really address the dark energies that are coming forth and possessing us. And if and haunted vaginas are no laughing matter, okay? They can destroy your first chakra. And that That sounds very serious. It's it's incredibly serious. Oh yeah, I, I agree. And so so what do you do to prevent um dark energy? Do you have to like put a crystal up inside you or is that how you prevent well prevent energy from taking over your first chakra? Well actually I have a very good tea recipe that is great for flushing out the toxins. Also you can try putting a moonstone on your forehead chakra, the third eye, and that will just you know, bring balance, it'll balance out your energies, and it will just, it will help release the chi, and, you know, help us embrace our inner goddess. Or you could just never have sex with men. Well, you, those oh, wait, 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 okay, okay, never? Like, really, never? I mean, yes. I don't understand the problem with, like, rape, well, um, if, if you're having the China problems, it's probably because you let an agent of the patriarchy in there. <laughs> well, what do you mean I let? But okay. Wait, wait a second. But, what but do you even mean you let an agent of the patriarchy in? Look, I, I sometimes like to sleep with men. Okay, maybe not sometimes, maybe all the time. But I'm just telling you that you can't just, just not sleep with men, and that's the solution, right? I mean, oh, oh no no no! All all PIV is rape. Okay, PIV. Well, you no, know no, the other no, 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 no. You don't even have to have. You don't even have to have actual physical contact with a man for him to be having sex with you. That's the thing. That's right. I mean, like it's it's impossible for you to keep yourself spiritually clean if there's a man out there somewhere who's you know slap. In his pickle while thinking about you. I mean, that's the exact same thing as being oh, raped, nice. right? Oh, so, I mean, great. there's just no way to avoid it unless you put well, that's Karen is stuff. completely right. Karen is completely right. And the other night I was astral projecting and in the form of an owl. And that's my spirit animal. And we're very marginalized. But anyway, while I was out there, I encountered some very dark masculine energies. They pervade everything. They possess the men, the, the patriarchy. And I think that some of them are reptilians, but I'm not 100% sure on that. Reptilians? Ooh, that sounds oh, they're weird. all... So you're like Cold-blooded bastards. They're, they're, they're involved with the Illuminati, and they have to be stopped. Oh, but I, I don't know. I, I think well, they're just... just I mean, like having sex with sexy reptilian alien like, men? That's hot. Why would you want to stop that? Because oh, no, no. Sexy reptilian agent. It is coming. <laughs> it is coming between us and the power of the goddess. Okay. Being, being sexy is. They are drowning way. my sacred they feminine energy, and sex. that's just not something that I can okay, handle. Girls, 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 you're talking over each other, so maybe we should take some turns. 
So please, um, Willow Sky, explain to me how having sex with sexy reptilian aliens is patriarchy, and and then uh, then then uh, Marcy, come in and, and explain how like all sex is patriarchy. Well, as I mentioned before, the owlkin, which is what I am, are heavily marginalized, and these reptilians, with their heavy masculine energy, they just keep coming in and raping us with their eyes. Okay. All right. Oh, I see. So maybe they have some like mind control that are mind yes. controlling the Yes. That is my theory. It's my uh, theory that they are coming in, and they are cutting off our connection to the goddess and the energy from the moon. And you see, as a Cancerian, I am more in tune with the ebb and flow of the moon as it travels across the celestial heavens. Okay, I, get, I see the connection with the owlkin. So is there a T that helps to prevent the reptilian aliens from, from cutting us? Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. And also, one thing that you can do to help to clean a haunted vagina is by dipping a tampon in holy water and then just inserting it as you normally would. Okay, and uh, okay, I, I, okay. I'm not sure what's happening with holy water. List by a patriarchal religion? I mean, like, how, how would that cleanse your vagina? Well, you can actually bless the water yourself by placing it near your window under the full moon. Ah, okay. Well, that's that's very good to okay. me. So, to prevent the reptilian yes. al uh, aliens from infesting your, your, your feminine Absolutely. Gym, you need to put, uh, soak a, uh, a uh, tampon in holy water that's been blessed by our goddess, the moon. Um, I, I want to bring in I, I want to bring in uh, Marcy May because I feel like she might be being silenced because she hasn't really said anything so far. So please, Marcy, go ahead. I I, I sense a, a little bit of uh, perhaps tension from you. Well, first of all, even if you go through all of that mumbo jumbo, you're still dealing with agents of the patriarchy. No matter what you do, you're still dominated. No matter what you do, you're still an oppressed individual. So you really can't, under those circumstances, con consent. Anything that you do is going to be coerced. So you're still being raped. And, and honestly... You're essentially raping yourself. Yes, making themselves making themselves uh, appeal to your aesthetic senses, which, you know, aesthetics is just a construct anyway. And probably one created by the patriarchy. So your whole idea of what makes men attractive is just something that was designed by men to make you think that you're consenting when you're really not. Um, um, well, I still not quite sure why pie is rape. You were talking about pie being rape? Um, all, all, oh no, no, PIV, penis and vagina. All penis and vagina is rape. All, all sex that can get you pregnant is rape because if you get pregnant then you're in danger. You have the the possibility of complications. If you decide to go have an abortion, you you could be in danger having an abortion because you have to walk through all those evil pro lifers and you know they might beat you. Okay, so, okay, okay. Just that's great Hannah. Just to clarify what you're saying, Marcy, you're saying that it's rape when men look at us and it's rape when we have sex with them. Um, and it's rape when men think about us. Well, how are we ever going to be free of rape if there are men on the planet? We have to kill them all. Oh, oh, that's that, what that would make it. But wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. All the men. I said something family. that even a benefit to me here. How do I have sex with men if they're all dead? You we don't. Could, you know, we, we, we don't really need men for that. No, you but I men. actually really prefer to have sex. With, I mean, why, why can't can the we goddess will provide? Yeah, exactly. Maybe the goddess will provide a solution. We could go into their brains and cut out the parts that of of men's brains that tell them that they want to rape women. And also, actually, 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 since we're in their brains already, could we take out the parts that tell them they don't want to have sex with me? Because those are the parts that really sort of make me upset. Like if I come on to a guy and he says, no, I'm not interested in having sex with you, and, and then I'm like, oh, my God. And Marcy, you were busy telling me that is also rape. Yes, that's <laughs> manipulative, and, and <laughs> it just makes you want to more. I, I don't know if we could really accomplish that, because 
each one of them is just a temple of dark energy that is just pervading every facet of our society. Yeah, but but but, but, but we have to, have to if you rape yourself with a tampon soaked in holy water in order to protect yourself from rape by by these men, then you know that's still rape. I mean, because you have to do it. You're right. Right. That be worse. Karen's right. You guys are. I keep telling you, the only solution is the final one. But still, I don't. I don't want to kill all men. Can't like it. Come on, you gotta consider, Marcy. You have to consider. You know, the idea. I've actually considered the three bleeding. Friends and insert like a chip, or maybe cut out some parts. Just letting it flow. Oh, you can't use chip. Hold on my leg. A man's name. That's an agent of the patriarchy too. No, but, but I mean, I don't think you're. I think you're quashing my idea here, Marcy. I think you're. You're not accept. You're not allowing it in. You're not agreeing with me. I think that. It, I mean, I really I expressing herself, and we should respect that. I think it's a solution. I think that we could go into men's brains, you know, drill a hole into their brains, and then implant a chip that says, "I always want to have sex with Raven Moon Dragon, and that way I can have sex with with Johnny Depp." Yeah. Oh no, no, Johnny Depp is awesome. I have been perching outside of his window time and again, but he never notices me. So At this rate, we'll never be together. See, oh, see how you're being oh, dominated? Oh, little Scott! Johnny Depp is mine! Look, fuck you, okay? How dare you? How dare you? The connection that we feel Lady. together is... is bullshit. What is this shit about connection and Lady. Lady. We were together Remember. in a past life. <laughs> no, 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 no. You guys are just fun films. This is, this is sad. I, aren't you guys serious about your, your feminism? You you, you not you understand see how these men are making us turn on each other. Saying that the solution we don't have to kill men, we just have to brainwash them to have sex with us. That's what will stop rape culture. That's what I'm saying. We need to make it so men can't say no to women, and that will stop rape culture. Can't you understand that, Marcy? Don't you understand that, Marcy? We don't have to kill men. Rape culture. She's right, you know. We need to come together. I read oh my, my, my horoscope I, said that today, up. today it was going to be a cha life-changing day. And that this would be the first of many meetings like this. It's important that we come together as sisters. Astrology is an agent of the patriarchy. How can you say that? Well, if you let it dictate your life, it's obviously got to be from the patriarchy. Only the patriarchy would dictate everything that a woman does. Certainly, that couldn't come from other women. I feel like your um, your lady, aura is very oppressive right now, Marcy. Oppressive. Okay, 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 ladies, ladies, ladies. Raven hung up on us. She was that upset. Oh, no. I've invited her back, hopefully she'll come back. But but I mean, we we were very, very hurtful to her for not it's, it's agreeing true. with what she said. And you know, I think I think we really need to to you know, reach out to her if she comes back, which which I hope she will, because we, we really hurt I'm just so glad that we're connected. Um, by not, not I don't know. Okay. I think that's one of the dangers. Uh, Fun I just, feminism. I just don't know what we'll do if we don't get rid of these patriarchal oppressors. See, that's the problem. It's the patriarchy. The patriarchy hurt well, Raven Moon Dragon's feelings. She has all these yeah, ideas no, that have no, been the patriarchy made holding on to them. The patriarchy oh, turned us against each other. I'm so sorry about that, oh, guys. Back. Some lunatic <laughs> my channel and. It took me forever to get it back, but I'm really sorry. I apologize for everything that she said and did. Um, it, I'm really sorry. You've oh. changed, Raven. Oh, oh my gosh. I, I think the patriarchy is possessing me, too. It's took a go for Murmoto. 
Oh, oh I know who that is. Oh, relax. It's All okay. Right. Right. Making you over and making you sensible oh, again. Oh, 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 shit. What, what the fuck was that? <laughs> oh, man. Okay, I let's... Think, I think I'm okay now. <laughs> Anna? Yeah, let, let's, back let's just... Let's just... Morning. We have fun. Oh. I, I, I don't know what happened. I kind of blacked out. It's it's been this weird thing. Uh, I don't. It's light outside. Like last night, it was completely dark, and I have no idea what the fuck just happened. Uh, I don't know. I think well, one of my neighbors broke into my house. I do. Okay. All right. Well, I, I think I think actually it was just the oppressive forces of the patriarchy <laughs> causing us to be that way. Yeah, it was. It was. Let's just blame the patriarchy for everything we don't want to think about ourselves. Yeah. Okay, so let's start the discussion. Um, uh, the, the discussion is, of course, uh, campus predators, uh, men on campus being basically accused of being predators. And, uh, yeah, what's, what's happening with men because of that? The fact that men are being accused of being more likely to be a sexual predator than a sexual mm -hmm. victim. Which statistically isn't isn't supported by the evidence, and uh, and also using this kind of campus rape hysteria to to basically make campus sort of a toxic environment for men. Yeah. Anyone want to speak to that? Uh, well, can we actually uh, discuss some of what recently happened at uh, Ottawa University and oh, okay. um, and Queen's University? Some yeah. extent. I, yeah. Yeah. Introduce it, bring it up. Yeah, because really what happened was that a lot of the feminists on campus at Queen's University, they got together and decided they wanted to get rid of their men's issues club because they were going to bring Janice Fiamengo uh, as a guest lecturer, and they had it in their minds that uh, she was a rape apologist and a racist and a bigot, and that that was just going to bring about rape culture on campus. So they actually tried to shut down the club to get that, um, to keep that from happening. And it was insane. And in Ottawa University, they actually managed to get together and shut down the talk. And it was really violent and pretty crazy. Did you guys hear about that? Um, oh, yeah. 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 Well, so I watched it, and you're right, it was, it was really sinister. What I found really interesting was that after they managed to shut everything down and so they felt that they had been victorious, they started uh, sort of rhythmically banging and singing and it, it was almost like they were singing glory, glory, hallelujah. You know, like they, it was, they were singing a hymnal or, you know, a it was paean. Nice. It was... It was like quasi-religious uh, in in sort of the the effect that that you know what I was feeling when I was listening to it. It was like these these are religious people singing in church, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so that that was just bizarre to me that they that they would be uh, uh, basically ending their efforts that way with this sort of hymn to, you know, of praise to their ideology for managing to, like, quash any kind of dissenting ideas, which is bizarre. Yeah, that's Cult -like. really crazy. It really is. Because what they're trying to do is shut down all opposing opinions before they can even be expressed. And that's really disturbing. Well, yeah, that's... Studio Brule sort of summed it up. Well, I mean, and it's not, it's not like... Um, he said that uh, they, they, they say that they are protecting free speech by censoring free speech. Yep, that's the logic. Well, you know, it, it, it's not like it's not like other groups aren't guilty of that kind of uh, behavior. I mean, I've said in the past that the uh, the heretic or blasphemer of 500 years ago is no different from the. Uh, anti-feminist or misogynist or climate change denier today, right? Like, it's it's a way of labeling somebody as having bad ideas and harmful ideas, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, and it's a way of controlling language. And it is like the the ideology in power is going to attempt to protect 
protect itself and its power by controlling thoughts and language and what people are allowed to say and therefore what others are allowed to hear. It's just, it's, it's not feminism that's, uh, feminism isn't unique uh, in that. Um, religious fundamentalists are also guilty of those things, you know, the uh, Spanish Inquisition also guilty of those things, right? Like, I mean, it's, it's human nature that this kind of thing happens. Um, but it, it is really, really disturbing to me to see that kind of thing going on in a university. So, when you are university, you're to be, universities are supposed to be the one place where something like that doesn't happen. They're supposed to be, you know, bastions of of discussion and intellectual uh, open mindedness, where ideas and thoughts are supposed to be exchanged, and this is just the opposite. Yeah. Uh, what I was going to well, say. Yeah, it's like a more like madrasa. Um, what I was going to say was. Um, when you have uh, when you have a belief system, truth is like uh, is like the the, uh, the ultimate universal solvent, or reason is the universal solvent of uh, something based on the belief system. Conclusions made that are based on an emotional belief system. So of course you have to have to uh, ostracize truth and reason because they they illustrate they they put light on the fact that you you are basing your your conclusions on purely emotional. Uh, processes, and there there is no rational basis. And what's what's really annoying about feminism is that it is a belief system. It is essentially a religion, and it presumes for itself the the legitimacy of a science. And at the same time, it says, "I am a science." It does not recognize that anything that's a science is open to criticism, and in fact, invites criticism. Because well, that's, that's the whole thing. A theory is only a theory until it has been uh, demonstrated to not be accurate or not have veracity. Um, but it is always, I mean, even the theory of evolution uh, is open to criticism and uh, to uh, alternative evidence and, you know, people trying to disprove it and all of those things, um, as it should be, right? Mm -hmm. So you have this, uh, and I don't think that there are any Darwinists out there who are trying to silence creationists. Um, often they're trying to debate them, they're openly wanting to debate them, they're not trying to shut down their, their YouTube channels or their discussion forums. Um, they're just like, bring it, right? Because we have the evidence uh, on our side, right? And it's generally creationists who try to shut down atheists and scientific YouTube channels and stuff like that um, as being offensive or uh, infringing copyright? There are a lot of uh, a lot of attempts to bring down the channel over uh, just phony copyright infringement claims. Well, I actually, so I mean, I'm actually going to disagree with you slightly, Karen. I think that there's hmm? uh, sort of a um, there's a hard core of believers among Darwinists who, who think that it's essentially proven and we cannot question it. Um, and there's a, and, and if you, when you're talking about religiously motivated creationists, I agree. Uh, people who base it on the Bible says so. But there are some questions in uh, like abiogenesis and, uh, and life, where life started that we really don't know the answer to. And we need to respect that 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 unknowing, the fact that we don't know the answer, mm -hmm. and that's something we well, might find out the thing, further. The thing, though, too, is that you can, you can accept that you don't know how it all began, right, but still accept that, you know, evolution is the most solidly backed explanation for how things have gone since it all began. Um, but well, that, yeah. you know, you, you sort of, uh, you know, like... There, there's a difference between saying, you know, this is how it all began, um, and saying I don't know, right? Like that's that's the main thing is is if you don't know, you can't. If you can't know, then you don't know. Yeah, yeah and exactly. people should be scientists should be able to say, you know, maybe there's no way that we ever can know. Right? That's where uh, 
that's where the idea of co um, combining solid evidence with rational thought comes in. Where, um, and I, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right, but Occam's razor, where that comes <laughs> in, where you look at um, two possibilities mm -hmm. and one of them is far out and the other one is more likely. You're, you're not, you take the one that is the more likely explanation. You take the one that's a more reasonable explanation. Um, I'm not sure if I'm articulating it right, but but basically, if you have to make something well, you, up you for your other explanation, you should <laughs> use that explanation if you don't have to make something up for the other one. Um, the way I heard it explained yeah. to me was you have a cat and you have a bowl of milk out and you leave the room and and you come back and the milk is empty. Do you think the cat drank it, or do you suppose the milk fairy took it? And obviously, the milk fairy, you have to make something up for that, so the more reasonable explanation is the cat. And I think that's where a lot of the discussion on evolution is um, is in that the they're using the more reasonable explanation, or the more, you know, the more fact-based, but not necessarily proved explanation. And I think we need to do the same thing with gender issues. You know, bringing it back around to feminism versus everybody else. A lot of times, feminists really have to make something up in order to uh, have their have their theory sound solid and reasonable to them. Uh, and a really good example of that is their rape culture theory, where they they've made this supposition that if they define something as rape, that if the people who experience it don't consider it rape, that doesn't make it not rape when it happens to those people. Um, it, it just means that they don't understand what has happened to them. And rather than maybe considering the fact that not all sex that doesn't meet their narrow definitions is violence, you know, they're they're making up this idea that people don't understand when something violent has happened to them. And and then they're complicating it by uh, misapplying standards that have to do with uh, treatment of post-traumatic stress disorder so that they can say, if you deny that violence happened to you and you take responsibility for your actions, that's just more of a sign that you're a victim. So it's it's you got to look at whether or not they're being rational and logical in their thinking and, and whether they're sort of having to make stuff up to uh, to uh, justify their beliefs. Yeah. And, and really this is heavily based in emotion. It's not really based in logic. A lot of these feminists, these campus feminists, are really emotionally invested in these things being true. Because a lot of them are victims of assault or whatever slight, real, or imagined uh, they need this to be the explanation. And no matter how terrible what happened to you was, it doesn't make patriarchy theory or rape culture real. It doesn't make you right by default, even though they like to argue that. They, you know, they like to argue that, well, you know, this happened to me, and this is evidence that we're living in a rape culture. And it's just simply not true. That's, that's broken logic. That's anecdotal evidence. Well, it's looking for a reason, yeah. right? It's it's the just world fallacy yeah. or or the things have to happen for a reason fallacy that that um, you know, and a lot of it I think has to do with uh, a real uh, resistance on you know, because here's the thing: anytime you experience something traumatic. Um, your brain will try to make you learn a lesson, right? Your brain will try to make you see any mistakes you might have made that, or any poor judgment you might have exercised that led you into that situation so that you don't have that happen to you again, right? And this is true whether you're in a car accident or whether you get hit by lightning or whether you get raped or whether your child is uh, picked off of a hiking trail by a cougar right, or a bear, right, there, your brain is going to try to figure out whether anything you did contributed to that so that you 
can learn that lesson and not have it happen again. And because this is a natural survival mechanism that we all have, and the more traumatic the event, the more our brain will try and make us learn a lesson from it, um, the fact that feminists single out victim blaming as, you know, specifically in regard to sexual violence, as something that is absolutely taboo, nobody is allowed to question any of the victim's actions, um, you know, that or decisions uh, that that this is just not allowed. Right? I think that this stymies uh, recovery. I think it stymies healing, and it, it forces the victim to try to impose the blame or try to offload the blame onto something external, like rape culture, right? And I'm not even saying that the victim is to blame for anything, but there are lessons to be learned that I think that uh, some misguided advocacy uh, is preventing some victims from learning um, that would help them move on and feel safer in the future and, and be safer in the future, right? And so you, you have this, you know, I'm not allowed to question my actions leading up to this because that would be blaming myself. Right, and but that's not the case. That's just acknowledging the things that you have control over and the things that you have power over and the choices that you can make or not make in the future uh, that will lead you to be more safe or less safe, right? And and it's it's just they want to blame it on as something external and they want to assign all the responsibility to something external and they actually want it's almost like they want. They're okay with women being raped as long as the focus is on making the culture change rather than um, women having to examine their own actions and decisions and take responsibility for themselves, right? So, I mean, it, it's just it's just the most bizarre thing to me. Uh, like, wouldn't you think to yourself, if you ran a red light because you were tuning your radio and you got T-boned, wouldn't you just think, well... I'm not going to tune my radio while I'm driving anymore, right? Because, you know, that was a stupid thing to do. Um, like, I, I just, I don't understand how examining one's own actions leading up to a traumatic event is okay in every single situation other than when a woman is sexually victimized. It just doesn't make any sense other than to be treating rape as some completely unique phenomenon that that isn't like anything else. So, go ahead. Yeah, that the what you were saying about that reminds me of an that happened. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay. Uh, yeah, what, what you were saying that reminds me of an incident that happened when I was I would think in elementary school. Um, a friend of the family. Uh, who was a, a high school kid who was in a club that my father mentored, um, saved a girl's life at a party. She drank too much. She went out to her car. She passed out in front of the steering wheel. And then she had a heart attack from um, overconsumption of shots of whiskey, from what I understand. And, and it was, you know, the, the that Ohio teen drinking culture. I'm sure there's a lot of it everywhere, but I'm, I'm from an Ir a German and Irish community largely, and it's, drinking is pretty normal. Um, and this was, there's a lot of heavy drinking parties. Now, if she had passed out and someone had victimized her, the idea of uh, pointing out that drinking too much is dangerous would have been taboo. But since she drank too much and she had a heart attack instead, um, actually her heart stopped. It's it's congestive, not congestive heart failure, but heart failure due to uh, alcohol poisoning. That she was she was not considered a victim of that. She was she was considered a dumbass for doing that to herself. She survived. Um, he did CPR until the the uh, EMS got there, which wasn't as quick as it is today because there was no 911 system. So. It's, it's one of those things where here you have the same exact situation. You drink too much, too fast, and you get hurt. And in one of those two situations, the girl is responsible. In the other of those two situations, she has zero responsibility just because the person who harmed her is responsible for his actions. And that suddenly makes her not responsible for putting herself at risk. 
Yeah. If that doesn't if that doesn't illustrate that traditionalist dynamic of uh, women are acted upon, men act. I don't know what does. Um, and the reality is, we're not blaming all men for being potential rapists when we say that. The reality is that there is a number of men and women who are rapists, and they go and they find people who are vulnerable, which includes people who have drank to excess and passed out in dark rooms of parties. Uh, and it's, that's not victim blaming. It's simply a precaution to avoid becoming a, a victim of a crime. Now, something by definition, something that's said in the, with the intent to help you avoid becoming a victim can't be victim blaming because there's no victim. There's no victim before the victimization occurs. So how can it be victim blaming? But um, I wanted to just do a call out because we, we mentioned a few things and we didn't explain what they were. Dr. Fiamenko has done a series of lectures um, with uh, the Canadian Center for Equality or Canadian Association for Equality. The lectures occurred um, in Toronto and Ottawa. If you want to see video footage of those lectures and find out what she talked about and how she was silenced by feminist protesters who apparently don't like people talking about anything that isn't feminism um, because they don't actually agree that anything outside of feminism has any legitimacy, please go to Studio Brule's channel, user Studio Brule, or you can check out um, the Queen University uh, website for um, an update on uh, where that where those where that uh, where that video footage is, it's a good lecture, and it certainly illustrates some pretty ugly truths about the feminist movement. At the same time, when when you see how they're verbally her, uh, verbally intimidating and harassing a ninety pound older woman, um, anyway, it, it it has to, it has to be seen to be believed. But um, so. Uh, last call out on the show topic, which which sort of evolved into <laughs> evolved into talking about crazy feminists on campus and campus censorship, rather than about um, the so-called epidemic of campus rape being perpetuated by campus by men on campus. Um, does anybody have a last statement on either of those two topics that they want to throw into the ring? You guys are all on mute. Okay, Karen raises her hand. Go ahead, Karen. <laughs> Um, I just want to say that, that the entire phenomenon of victim blaming, uh, as it's labeled, um, I think at, at the very least it acknowledges that there's a victim. Uh, it acknowledges that something bad happened to somebody that they uh, did not like or would not have agreed to or did not consent to or, or that was harmful to them, right? And so uh, the the entire thing of uh, behaving this way to avoid being victimized, or uh, maybe you should not have done that, and you would not have been victimized, right? It at least acknowledges that there's a victim, that that you have been victimized. Um, when you when you look at the difference between that and uh, and what men tend to get, which is, you know, if you didn't like it you're crazy or you're gay or you're weird like dude you got laid right that you're not even not only you're blaming him but you're not even acknowledging that something bad happened to him right and and so I think that you know at least in terms of victim blaming you're acknowledging that the woman has been victimized at least there's that with men they don't tend to uh, to receive anything like that. They just tend to receive like you're crazy or you're gay if you didn't want it or if you didn't enjoy it. So yeah. Go ahead, Hannah. Well, there's a there's another aspect to this too. Um, the fact that there is a discussion on victim blaming when it when it comes to women indicates that both sides of the discussion um, well both sides of the discussion are acknowledging that something happened. Um, and then and, and the other thing is that the side of the discussion being accused of victim blaming is acknowledging something that feminists really don't, and that is that women do have the power to defend ourselves, that we do have the power to, um, to, to avoid or fight back against some situations. And, uh, and that's something that, that feminists sort of try to take away with their narrative on rape. Because the moment you decide 
for yourself something that they disagree with, they're actually using this thought terminating cliche that they've sort of ripped off from from other concepts that it doesn't actually match up with in order to prevent you from making your own decisions related to your own experiences. You can't decide you're not a rape victim because if you decide you're not a rape victim, that's self-blame and it just shows that you've been through a terrible trauma. So at, at what point, you know, does a woman have the ability to say, no, I had consensual sex, I shouldn't have done it and I wish I hadn't, but I made that decision myself. When feminism is, is, is taking that away, they're not helping women, they're not empowering women, and they're not protecting women, they're using women. Okay. And, uh, you know, one last thing. Uh, one of the, what I really feel this comes down to is that feminists only want, they say that they really care about male victims of abuse and rape on campus, but they said, they say something very specifically, they say, well, you can discuss this within feminism. There's no reason for you to have your own space to talk about these things. And it's just so insufferably stupid for someone to say something like that. You you guys can't have your own space, but you can have your own space within, you know, the the mindset of patriarchy theory and everything like that. It's it's like, "Oh, you were hurt by the patriarchy, and that's why. That's why you were raped and abused." Yeah, that is, they're essentially saying that men don't deserve their own space outside of feminist oversight, which is very Orwellian. And uh, and the other thing is that judging from feminists' history with dealing with men's issues, they don't. They they where's the cold hard cash feminism? Where are the where's the cold hard cash that you have put towards issues that face men and boys? Let's see let's see your budget lines. How many towards men and girls? Or sorry, women and girls, and how much towards men and boys? Um, and throughout how many years that you've said you're about so-called equality, which incidentally, um, and what I mean by towards men and boys is not telling that men and boys are bad, but actually helping them when they're hurt. Um, something tangible that in which they're, they're helped when they're hurt, not being told that they're predators, but recognized as victims and as, assisted in getting the therapy and services that they need. That kind of cold hard cash. Not, you know, six... 600k to the White Ribbon Foundation to go into middle schools or even elementary schools and, and make and tell boys how they're responsible for violence against women. Not that shit. I'm talking yeah. about cold hard cash services for survivors for male sur boys and men who are survivors of domestic abuse, child abuse, sexual assault, and uh, men who are suicidal, men who have mental health issues. All of that. Cold hard cash to help them in a real way, not just tell them that they're the problem. And uh, with that, uh, this is this is the uh, Honey Badger Hangout for this week. Um, if you like what we have to say, please do subscribe to our channel. It's uh, uh, Honey Badger Radio. The channel name is Honey Badger Radio. And uh, uh, or um, go and uh, like, uh, go and uh, become part of our circles on our Google Plus page, which is also again Honey Badger Radio. And uh, if you really like us, you can donate to us. Or if you really like Karen, who affords us a, a platform with this particular, with her channel, um, please do donate to her. The donation button is on her on her ribbon. Um, and uh, thanks for listening. And thanks to everybody who helps make this show possible. And yeah, have a good day. <laughs>